The DEA states that Delta 9 THCO and Delta 8 THCO are now considered controlled substances. Say what? Man, I'm kind of surprised I'm making this video. Are you really surprised? Nah, not at all. Honestly, I feel like it was only a matter of time before one of these semi-synthetic cannabinoids either got banned or became illegal, and I guess that time is now. What's going on, guys? This is Dr. Andrioni, aka The Cannabis Doc. First off, I'd like to say thank you to all of my subscribers so far. You guys are awesome. I've already made it past 900. Without you, literally, I couldn't have done it. You guys are the ones who even brought this up to my attention in the first place. Pretty cool, so thank you. Secondly, I do have to acknowledge my bad for taking some time off. I had an injury, if you guys can see it. I'm better now, it's all good. And thirdly, if you guys didn't see this yet, at Cookies, you get eight eighths for 200 bucks. I think it's like a five day sale. <laughs> I feel like it'd be a disservice if I didn't tell you, so there you go. All right, so if you haven't heard the news, the DEA stated that because Delta 8 THCO and Delta 9 THCO are not naturally found in cannabis, they do not count as hemp and are therefore considered controlled substances. Hey yo, come check this out. I got Delta 8 THCO, Delta 9, Delta 10, Delta 11 and 12 and 15. I got all the HCOs. You want any? You sure? You're missing out, it gets you like 50 times as high. This all went down, or I guess was publicly disclosed on February 13th. An attorney named Kite inquired about the legal status of Delta 8 THCO and Delta 9 THCO with the DEA back in August of 2022. Hey, yo. Hey pal, what's up with the legal status here of uh, Delta 8, Delta 9 THCO? Send. And it was only recently, I think February 6th or 7th, several months later, that they just got back to him with this letter. Here is the website with the letter that the DEA responded to the attorney with. I'll leave this link in the description below. Basically, it reads this. This is in response to your letter dated August 17th, 2022 and subsequent email dated February 7th, in which you request the controlled status under the Controlled Substance Act of THC Acetate Ester. The only substances of which the DEA is aware of the THC Acetate Ester are Delta 9 THCO and Delta 8 THCO. The DEA reviewed the CSA and its implementing regulations with regard to the control status of these substances. The CSA classifies tetrahydrocannabinols as controlled in Schedule 1. For the purposes of the CSA, the term tetrahydrocannabinols means those naturally contained in a plant of the genus cannabis, as well as synthetic equivalents of the substances contained in the cannabis plant and or synthetic substances, derivatives, and their isomers with similar chemical structure and pharmacologic activity to those substances contained in the plant. Delta-9 and Delta-8 THCO do not occur naturally in the cannabis plant and can only be obtained synthetically and therefore do not fall under the definition of hemp. And it continues on to say, the chemical structures shown below were used to make these determinations. Sincerely, Terrence E. Boos, or Boos. There you have it. To give you guys a little backstory, once the 2018 Farm Bill was signed into legislation, it allowed hemp production in the US for a list of reasons, one of those being CBD production. Hemp was defined to include any cannabis plant or derivative thereof. And so it went, all these other cannabinoids started popping up left and right. And they're all legal because they're all made from CBD or they're derived from hemp. So if you haven't seen my videos on this stuff yet, I highly suggest you go watch them. What happens if we don't? I will turn this car around. But since you're here, let's just take a second to break these cannabinoids down. We can really break them down into three groups. There's the naturally occurring cannabinoids, there's the synthetic cannabinoids, and then there's the semi-synthetic cannabinoids. Naturally occurring cannabinoids are produced by the cannabis plant and well, occur naturally. Some of these guys are THC, CBD, their acidic precursors, CBG, CBC, the list goes on. For synthetic cannabinoids, these guys are molecules that bind to the same group of receptors to which cannabinoids and cannabis plants bind. Synthetic analogs often have much greater binding affinity and much greater potency. This usually results in these molecules being total agonists at the CB1 receptor, whereas THC is just a partial agonist. Therefore, these drugs can actually exacerbate the adverse effects that are associated with the activation of CB1 and 2. Now, there's this designer drug category, which I'll just mention quickly. These are the hardcore ones like K2 and Spice. Don't do these. These are bad, okay? It's usually sprayed on plant matter, which is then inhaled or smoked. It's just nothing that you want to get into. These should not be confused with the other major class of synthetic cannabinoids. These are molecules that are produced synthetically that are not always structurally related to natural cannabinoids, but are capable of selectively activating cannabinoids receptors, CB1 and CB2. These are mainly used for the scientific and medicinal research purposes. And as such, the names of these molecules usually begins with an acronym of the person who discovered it or where it was discovered. And then there's this third group. 
the semi-synthetic cannabinoids. These are cannabinoid analogs that start from a natural molecule whose structure has not modified to improve its activity. The major difference between synthetic and semi-synthetic cannabinoids is that the latter maintains the chemical structure of THC, on which small chemical modifications are produced in order to improve or refine its pharmacologic profile. This group contains the cannabinoids like delta-8-THC, hexahydrocannabinol or HHC, HHCP even, and delta-8 and 9-THCO, well up until recently. Even though delta-8-THC and HHC are said to be found naturally in cannabis, it's usually in super small percentages, so you'll never see it extracted naturally. Instead, it's obtained synthetically by a number of chemical processes, all which use CBD as the starting molecule. Whereas with delta-8 and 9-THCO, with that extra acetyl group or that acetate ester, you do not find that naturally in cannabis, just like that letter highlighted. We also had that recently published study which showed that burning THCO gives off that harmful byproduct, ketene, just like vitamin E acetate does. And thank you to my awesome subscribers who actually brought this study up to my attention. If you guys remember from like a couple years ago, vitamin E acetate was connected with all those adverse effects and the Evali and all that, all that lung issue back in the day. And lastly, I found this randomly while doing some research, but THCO was investigated as a non-lethal incapacitating agent back in the mid 50s. If you want to find more on that, it'll be on Wikipedia, and I'll put that in the link below, as well as all the other resources I've used for this video. Guys, stay tuned. There's a lot more to come. I hope to see you soon. Again, thank you, subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, push the button. It's right there. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. I'll see you guys next time.